Uh, show of hands in the room, who's been to this talk before? You're right, you have. They, they actually went through it and discovered that they tell the same jokes. And they, the they, they use the same slides. And they knew, do it also nearly at exactly the same time. Uh, I would say with no further ado, but a haiku was requested. So uh, first we have to have a haiku uh, to introduce our next two speakers. Um, it's Bruce and Heidi are great. A very long time I've known. Haiku says so much. So <laughs> Bruce and Heidi are going to talk about Own the Con. Todd. Hey, let's hear for Todd. Todd used the word haiku in a haiku. I really, that was pretty meta. I like that. Okay, so I think it's really great that there's nobody in here because it means I actually purposely put us up some against some pretty heavy hitting talks this afternoon because here's the deal. This is taped. You can watch it later. You don't need to be here. Bruce and I will say the same shit to an empty room. So, you know, we'll just, we'll just be us, right? Yes. Yeah, it's great. Super great. This is way better than the one in the other room the other day. It's not so bad. Um, I'm also quite amused that like half of you are my staff, so thanks for being here. I feel supported. <laughs> he, okay, he's um, on Twitter. I'm gonna take some questions from the audience on Twitter. Ah, shit. <laughs> All right, keep I going. Just, you're, you're like doing great, dear. You're just I really rocking it. I'm gonna hit you. Okay. <laughs> the schmoo ball that I forgot to bring with me. Hmm? Our violence policy. Well, it's in like the second page of your program. Um, all right, so we are up here for the 15th year in a row at ShmooCon 16, doing Own the Con, using almost exactly the same slides that we started this presentation with um, because we're lazy. So you know here the we only go. reason that we still own and have Keynote installed is because we don't want to change these slides. <laughs> Pretty much. Like we, I think Beetle and you did the first version of this in Keynote. Something like that. And it's been the same all the time. So that's why we still use Keynote just once a year. All right, so we're going to go through. Has any, most of you have been through this before. Who's new here? Holy all right, shit. so everybody not, shut up, janitor. Everybody <laughs> not in a blue shirt is basically, except for Tansy, has not been here before. You're dead to me. <laughs> why don't you stand up and show why? Oh, she did bad. That's not why. She's wearing my face on her shirt. <laughs> as is Todd. All right. All right. Um, you can do this one. So um, uh, we are not a nonprofit. Uh, there are a lot of conferences that do run as nonprofits. Has anyone been involved in a 501c3 before? Um, they're kind of complicated to run, even if not like intellectually like difficult. Like it still requires work. You have to meet. You have to have minutes. You have to do all this stuff. Um, Heidi can just wake up and be like, I feel like a board meeting today, and that's it. She can just do whatever she wants. So <laughs> I just talk um, to myself. Rather than have all the shenanigans of a 501c3, we are an LLC, which does mean we pay taxes, but it simplifies our life immensely. Uh, we try to run ShmooCon relatively neutral from a um, uh, you know revenue perspective. Uh, we're very transparent with our finances, probably more transparent than even a lot of freaking nonprofits are. Um, but uh, it does mean that we have the flexibility to do it however the hell we want, and and as people and volunteers ebb and flow. It's always Heidi running the show. Um, and so it's very easy just to keep the LLC um, functional. Uh, we don't have a lot of meetings. There isn't a lot of planning that happens in big groups. Um, some of you that, who's involved in conference or large event planning? Um, a handful, like there are other events of this size that meet a lot yearly, weekly. There's all these things that happen. We don't do that, partially because I think we've been using the same volunteers for a long time and they kind of know what they're doing, but also we're not cut like that. We don't like to have a lot of process. <laughs> like, how do you involve the right people for the right things, um, but not have, you know, a bunch of meetings or phone calls? I think he's saying we don't like people. She's also allergic to phone calls. Uh, I like will. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Completely break out in hives when someone's like, can you call me? She's like, oh, why do I have to call them? <laughs> like, they want to talk. And so... Eventually, she'll call them, but um, she does not like to have phone calls. Um, we do have some mail list. We do use Slack more and more than we used to. In the last couple of years, but not for planning. Not for planning, for Just more, more operations. More like stuff. chat in the groups. Yeah, and, and we have started planning literally for next year, last year, because we signed the contract for the next few years, um, you know, already. So we're already planning next year's MUCON. So there, I did that slide. Now it's you your turn. You did do that slide. Okay. So in preparation for doing this talk, as I do every year, I went and watched the last year's own the con. And then for some reason this year I decided to go ahead and watch like 
speed watch. I don't know, put us on like three times speed so it sounded like chipmunks. But I decided to watch like the three or four previous years and I just want to apologize because what I realized like it really horrified me is that Bruce and I made the exact same jokes every single year on the exact same slides. So if we seem a little dry this year, it's because we're choking back our words. We're like, think of something new. Be more funny, funny person. I'm not yeah, funny. Yeah, right. It's right. hard to tell a joke on demand. You can you ask can, a right question now, anytime you want. I'm good at repeating. Okay, so the question is, um, have there been any risks with running an LLC versus a nonprofit, or if we've ever considered shifting the structure? And the answer is no and no. No, I mean, I think that the biggest thing is you just end up paying taxes, right? Um, but the, the trade-off is, I mean, worth the price? Like, literally, in, like, in there's no opinion, overhead. I think, you know, for what we're doing, it, it works for us. I mean, and I just think you do your research and you decide what what bounds do you want to live in, but for but, us. But the thing is like we can make like material buying decisions, like this is the right thing to do for a con, and we don't need to like get the board together because it violated the budget or whatever, um, and that we, actually is yeah. a risk reduction, right? Because you are able to on the fly, like this year we had to go out and buy new streaming equipment because live stream jacked their prices up. It was actually cheaper to buy gear than buy their service. So we went out and bought gear, but I mean, like if there was a budget that we had, we would have violated it and like we would have had to get approval. And I'm like, hey, I think the right thing to do is buy these services. And Heidi's like, are you sure? And I gave my justification and she said, go buy them. And I boop, drove off and bought them. What? Nothing. It, it, did I steal your thunder? Thunder. That's a new joke. See that? <laughs> made. So Code hipster, get back. To be clear, your singing is very much a joke. It okay. is. <laughs> All right. Whoa. Oh, 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 it's starting now. All right. We, we've made it to slide three, everybody. And the first slide was the title screen. Um, so, uh, and okay, to be clear, if you haven't been here, these, all the topics are not in order. We're just going to talk about what we talk about it when it comes up. I don't know what's coming next. So <laughs> it's just fun. I mean, I guess I can kind of see it, but I can't because it's too small. You did this to me last year, too, and I couldn't read anything on my screen. Oh, Thank God I put titles. We're good. We're good. I know what they say. Okay. okay. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Um, so we, we are <laughs> we're just a barrel of laughs. Uh, I think I said that last year, too. Yeah. Um, so our staff, we have um, roughly, actually, it's exactly, I think, 96 volunteers this year, not 94. So it is roughly 94. So it is roughly it 94. Is exactly Thank 96. you. Thank you, math guy. Uh, it's an approximation. Um, but beyond <laughs> the actual staff that is here or has worked on, like, conference, you know, with the review pa papers and that kind of thing, they don't all, all of them show up. Um, we also have an army of like general support. So dear Tansy, who hates my husband, Carr, was you know at my house stuffing bags with us a, a couple weekends ago. So we get we get a lot of support just beyond our general staff. Um, but uh, we talked about it opening. You want to talk about the t-shirt decision again? Yeah. So we, I mean, all staff are staff. It doesn't matter what their job is. And so we are we're very serious about uh, having staff be service oriented to attendees. So if an attendee has a question or problem or concern, they can approach anyone in the staff shirt and that person's job is to help them. And it doesn't mean that they have to like help them to completion, like know the answer or get them the thing, but they should be able to traffic cut them at least and say, this is where you're supposed to go, talk to this person, have you, whatever, to try to help the person find a way to, you know, to, to, to address their issues. So uh, it, it's worked pretty well for us. Um, and I think it's forced uh, in a lot of ways to help the staff work together across teams um, I know that there are some events where the teams are highly delineated, and it's like, well, that's their responsibility. Go talk to them. Like, that shit does not fly here. Um, and it helps the teams all work together uh, in, in a lot, uh, much more seamless way. Yep. So we have, have we had any failures with staff? Um, is, is just in general. Um, it, Right, right. Not, well, I wouldn't talk about that anyway. I mean, no, I'm just kidding. Um, Did she look at me? <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. I know. I uh, know. I'm a terrible your person. Your inventory in boxes next year. Okay. No. I, I mean, I, I, so it took, it, 
This definitely was like a growth. So um, when when we first started, I mean, we we kind of had like these team ideas, but we just kind of all did everything, right? And I think when I took over and it really continued to grow and we added more people and more people, um, we had I, I knew that I had to have certain people that I talked to about certain things. And so I worked to put leads, um, I identified people who I thought would be good leads for each department. And then they you know, grew a staff around those people. I mean, many were people that we already had, so I just picked the people who were the standouts anyway, except for Matt. He just keeps showing up, so I like him. Um, Code hipster, Matt Siding. <laughs> but, um, so I think we've been, I mean, we already had the cream of the crop, so we just got to run with that. I mean, we do have staffing changes from year to year, but it's, not, it's usually never for anything bad. I get, my volunteers are, why I keep doing this. Well, so. and I think that there, there's some, I mean, like you did a very good job of like aligning staff against their, the things that they like to do and that they were good at. So like. Um, oh, and I'll always move people too. Yeah, yeah, but like, you know, uh, um, Janitor, um, who was in here momentarily, got, like he's one of our security leads. Um, he is A, very good with martial arts, so if like shit goes sideways, he can solve problems, but also he's very good Without at, touching at, you. at deconfliction. Like, and, and, and he's talked to our staff and given, uh, you know, uh, um, basically, uh, you know, lessons on. Thanks, janitor. So uh, <laughs> he, uh, um, you know, is, is very good at, at helping other people understand de-escalation procedures and that kind of thing. So like he was a natural fit for that. Bob's AV lead. He used to do this in a formal life. Like he's very good with that. He can work with PSAV and the hotel staff. So when you align people with the things that they're good at anyway, they tend to be very successful in their role. And it's not a big weight for them to bear. It's not like, shit, what do I do? It's like, oh, I do this anyway. So it's very easy for them uh, to do it. That's color commentary. I am John goddamn Madden. I am just going to be. <laughs> Where's my turkey leg? Hey, uh, <laughs> we have um, we have questions we have from, question the from the peanut the gallery. Oh, we do so not this is have five new. minutes this is left. I, she wanted different. This is different. The first question is from. This is um, the thing. I should never ask for things from Brimley you. Pup. Brimley Pup. Brimley Hi, Pup Brimley. wants to know who's a good boy. Who's <laughs> Brimley, 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 you're a good boy. Brimley is sitting down here, everybody. Oh, is he, is Brimley in the room? Brimley is in the oh, room. Brimley. I, okay, I'll let Twitter know. Brimley, uh, Brimley. You're good, Somebody said you're my name. Oh, here. Okay. Aww. Well, you guys can't see him up there. I'll bring him down here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, was that you, Michelle? <laughs> all right, I'm going to... All right, yeah, 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 For those that don't like dogs, like, what is happening? <laughs> There's a mammal on stage. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the next slide. Um, so, well, just real quick, these are, that's pretty small for you guys too, but I think I got all the departments on there. Somebody will correct me at some point, but um, that is kind of the high level of all the departments that um, we have working here at the con. So um, last year, one of the things we added to this presentation was an approximation of the hours it takes to put this on. Um, Bruce and I, sat down, I think, last December and did sort of, to be clear, this whole presentation is back of the napkin, but these are, these are back of the napkin um, approximations of our time. So um, you can probably read it better than I can. So, um, I mean, Heidi's working on this, um, you know, kind of all the time throughout the year, like things kind of ebb and flow, but starting usually post DEF CON, like that's your marker, um, is... School starts, and then she starts to kind of get into part-time mode, and then by you know late September, it's t trending toward full-time, and then by December, like I'm ramping up toward full-time plus my full-time job, and then by the week or two before the con, it's an all-day event. Like we get up, and that's what we do. So even like last weekend, we had two work parties at our house, and one was T-shirt rolling and equipment checks and a bunch of other stuff, and then the second day is bag stuffing, and we get. 20 to 40 people to show up to do this. Or so that more, means yeah. on what? And or more. Or more. And so starting Friday morning, we are prepping our house for the onslaught. So it's like get the food ready, get people, like get all the rooms ready, get stuff staged. Like right. then moving people, furniture. People come, like they do the, the thing, they leave stated. that night, then we prep for the next day. So we go to bed at like midnight, and then we do it again the next day, and then they all leave, and then Monday we <laughs> decompress and fix the house and put it all back and whatever. Um, and then we're gonna actually, you know, it, 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 we have people over afterwards. And like, so just for the Potter family alone, there is like a two week window where it is from the time we wake up until the time to go to bed, our entire existence is Shmukon. Um, and so that's a lot of hours right there, right? 
and before that, obviously, like we're working our asses off too. So, um, but you know. so are a lot of other people. So we did best guess that I probably put in a thousand hours a year on this. Bruce is probably four hundred, and most of his time is in the months right prior to the con. Um, when you add up all of our other volunteer hours, um, what did I say there, Bruce? Uh, thousand plus. Yeah. And then it gets really tiny, so I'm not even going to bother with that. You all can read that. Um, but during the con itself, I mean, that's easy because we just multiply hours on shift by people in blue shirts, and I think it says 1,200 plus. Yeah. So it's a lot of time. Um, you know, so I guess the most important line on this slide is the last one. If you haven't thanked a volunteer yet, you should do that. So another question from the peanut gallery. I'm oh just going to do this on transitions. God. Uh, is it Brimley again? No, it's not Brimley. Brimley knows he's a good pup, so he's He's where. happy. Uh, Sciatic Nerd asks, when is a good cutoff date for bringing together logos to put on shirts, merch, etc.? Oh, okay. Um, so for shirts, <laughs> you can get shirts done in two weeks, and that still leaves time for like shipping malfunctions, right? Um, it kind of depends on it. Well, I'm saying that's the cutoff. This is like your. We believe in JIT conference planning. It's yeah. totally ju we, uh, just. Yeah, I would, I would recommend Boom. doing it before that, of course. But if you're like one, one, one color, one, you know, one color shirts and I need them, you know, in two weeks, then you can get them done in two weeks. Um, you can get them done faster than that, but you're going to pay a stupid pretty penny, so I don't recommend it. What, was, what other kind of merchandise? I mean, stuff we were like lanyards. So we do dice up lanyards, we've been doing these for years. Um, these are actually produced in China. And we actually have an issue where um, we have to make sure we're aware of Chinese uh, Lunar New Year because if we trend too close to that on the order, then it goes the other side of the order or the other side of New Year. Um, so we have to make sure we get those in, in time each year based on when Chinese New Year's falls. It's funny um, what we've learned over time. Yeah. I mean, but they're ordered from a Utah company. Uh, so so <laughs> we order them from the Utah company or they get some from China and they ship over. Once we actually had an error in printing, and they had to reprint our rush job, and they got them to us like in four days from China. So yeah, yeah, but we didn't pay for that one. Dark magic on that. Um, for things like bigger orders, like bags, when you have 2,200 bags shipped to your house on a 26-foot truck with multiple pallets, um, the, big, the big markers there are um, where they're shipping from. So for example, our bags this year came from Pennsylvania to Maryland, and they took a week. Okay, that's because they transferred at like two different stations in the four hours away. I don't know. I just I don't know. Four hours. They had to come four hours. I should have just gone and gotten, gotten them. them. Yeah. Um, so that's the kind of stuff you have to watch for with um, those bigger orders. Like, I don't understand. So anyone have a Jeep Wrangler? The Wrangler owners? So a couple. Yeah. So like I got a Wrangler and and I order from Quadratech in Pennsylvania. And, and it shows up like that day. I ordered two bumpers, front and rear, big freaking pieces of steel. 18 hours later, UPS ground, they showed up at my house. I'm like, that's fucking amazing. Like, that's great. Meanwhile, I get these pallets and they show up in a week and they travel the same distance. I don't get it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but other stuff, I mean, almost everything else is like foreign print takes five days, kind of seven days. But pad for shipping errors, pad for um, uh, printing errors, things like that. Yeah. Yes, Michelle. So it depends. Well, you, you just ask. You just ask. Um, so like Leeds is based. Leeds is a big bag manufacturer. They're based in Pennsylvania, so East Coast. So I know if I'm like late on picking my bags, like I've got a good bet if I stick with Leeds products. There's a couple other companies on the East Coast. Um, but then some are, you know, some are West Coast. So I know that those, those would probably get to me faster than a week, right? <laughs> right? I mean, just Pennsylvania. Uh, what <laughs> Yingling is a uh, is an import beer, so yeah, I guess my bags local, had to go through customs. Our local Chinese buffet too. has Yingling listed as an import, so <laughs> we must so. be in the south. <laughs> my my son is um, <laughs> Darrell. has son got is, good birthday. Just keep cruising. He's like. texting us birthday ideas for our middle son. How cute is that? Okay. Um, all right. So you guys are going to get a little bit of a sneak peek here on the next slide. So conference dates and venue, for uh, many, many years now, we've landed generally sometime in January. There's been a few exceptions to that. Um, next year, we will be back on Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. So that means you get Monday off to recover. We all like that. I know. Um, as far as venue goes, we've really only been in three. We're at the Wardman Park Marriott for um, three, four, four years. I don't even remember, five years, I don't know. 
And then we were here, and then for one short year, we had to hop over to the Hyatt Regency because, um, yeah. thanks, Obama. Exactly right. I couldn't book dates anywhere else because of a little inauguration event happening. Um, but we like the space. Um, it holds us quite well. I like that we're all contained on the same floor, which I think helps promote the atmosphere that we're trying to strive for here at Chmukon. Um Yeah, I've been to a number. I mean, we used to have uh, uh, Shmukon at the Warren Park Marriott, and, and we were down a floor, but we were still on a floor, which was nice. Well, we were until we grew to about 600, 900, and then we had to use that space up the escalator. And then no and one I goes up and down. Right, like nobody, nobody wants to go up and down. I've been to other conferences. Like once you start splitting floors, unless you're gigantic, nobody wants to go up and down. And I think that this works really well. Having the vendors that we intermix with right in the area where everyone leaves. Like I, I this year especially, it struck me like how well it works for meeting people, for seeing people, for even 2,200 people. Like you run into a lot of folks, and and you get to talk to people. It's a it's a really good venue uh, uh, for that purpose. Um, and we also like the Hilton. They're really easy to work with. We're a very easy client for them for the most part, and um, we find them pretty easy to work with. So um, yeah, we are. it's a good relationship for us. Um, most. No, I'm just saying, like, I mean, we are, I mean, this is one of the easiest events they run, I think. Uh, yeah, they, uh, they, they think we're super easy. Um, so um, hotel logistics. So a lot of people want to know, like, what do you do when you interface with the hotel? So a lot of my time is spent um, doing contracts, going over AV orders with Bob. The um, BEOs are banquet event orders. That's like how all the rooms are set. Like if you order food, if you know what time things need to be opened, closed. You know when should we check the garbage cans if you don't want us in the room? All that kind of stuff. Um, we used to have meetings. We don't do that anymore. We've been here too long. You know how the rooms are set, the diagrams. Um, our big thing is trash cans. Man. Woo. That get me yeah. hot when the trash cans are overflowed. <laughs> so. Oh, it, that was wait. I didn't even know that. What? That's what. We, we, whenever we had the meetings, the one thing I was always about was like. Well, okay, I misinterpreted what you said. I'm sorry. Let's just move on. Oh. Oh no! I uh, upset. Oh, yes, sir. You have a question. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Ask away. Sure. I, so there's a slide about, I don't know, 20, well, I think it's like 15 more slides. Um, we'll get there. We'll get yeah. there. It has a lot of little tiny numbers on it. I'm going to tell you exactly what I spent on everything. All right. So first of all, we're going to talk about the call for papers. Did anybody here submit a paper? Okay, good. Um, <laughs> do not have 10 minutes left, Aaron. It's the last talk of the day. I'm going to go till the party starts. I am not gonna go <laughs> till the party starts. And that Heidi dance off thing, that's a lie, by the way. If you saw that on Twitter. They made they've made that joke for fifteen years now. Did you know that? I don't go to the party. Oh no, it, it they always claim that you and I are gonna have a dance off at the party. Sounds like a plan. It's been a plan for a long time. I'm doubt this this gentleman's very excited about it, actually. I may have to come down and see if there's no fire alarm. No, please alarm. don't, because last time you did, we had a fire alarm. <laughs> Were you the one smoking in Literally the Literally last year, so. Um, it, was, it was just last year, yes. Yes, yeah. that's what happened. Dude, it's yeah. a $50 fine. Why is it set off the goddamn fire alarm? Like, it's, it's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, they were smoking in the elevator, and that's what set off the fire Smoke alarm. Smoke wherever you want. Um, so this year, we had a total of 219 submissions. That's actually up. Last year was somewhere around 168. Um... We are so, so this makes our acceptance rate once we fill all the tracks at about 18.7. I don't know why we put that percentage in there. It doesn't seem super important to me, but now you know that number, so just remember that. It'll be quiz later. It'll be like 18.7. Um, 259 unique names on submissions, but um, some people submit more than once or more than thrice. Um, using dubious and not even best guess methods, like we just sort of glanced at it. Um, 200 male, 56 female, three animaniacs. They are on stage tomorrow. Can you name the animaniac? <laughs> wow, oh, now sing the song. Somebody else wasted the 90s. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I would get done with class and bake and watch the animaniacs. Oh my <laughs> god. I heard. I'm so excited to do Animaniacs. Do we have children in the room? 
Okay, Excellent. we're good. I told, the, I told my kids I wouldn't tell them what I did when I was a kid until they were 25. So one of them's almost there. <laughs> he gets to learn the secrets. He's so excited. He's our most innocent child, so I don't know if it's going to do you any good. Um, 43 this year's speakers are first-time speakers of ShmooCon, 43 out of 58. Um, so I, I would Oh, I think I made a mistake in my, my little numbers here. Doesn't matter. Keep going. Go the, ahead. The, um, the we don't suffer from this now like we used to, but we used to get a lot of um, kind of like we're um, elite and exclusionary and it's a click and whatever. Um, and we've always been very transparent with like who speaks and, well, and whatnot. So that, that wasn't and in reference to our call for papers. Oh, no, there was definitely like, I mean, there was, yeah. So about it, about it. Well, oh, and it, yeah, there Michelle's like, I did it. I slagged you on Twitter. Like, I'm if for I sure. may, <laughs> most of those comments are in reference to our ticket sales process yes, and thinking even, that we're like stuff in the ballot on who gets tickets. The people who have ever said this are usually shut down very quickly when I data. say this. Right. And they go, oh, I didn't realize. And, th and, and that's the end of conversation. I mean, yep. I can prove this. It's sure. all public. I, I, exactly. That's it. I mean, I think we've been very good about getting new people on stage and putting new voices up there. Like, we are really, the, the program committee takes that, like, very seriously. I mean, that being said, you know, we have put people like Matt Blaze or Sergey on our stages, you know, like seven times. But I think it's, you know, with merit, right? Like, those are voices that are great to hear. And speaking of which, Matt Blaze will be gracing our stages once more at Closing Plenary because he is a very brave man. Me and Matt. Um, there's another question from the peanut gallery. Oh, God, I can't wait. Matt Arm Tomato would like to know, where's my lanyard? It's in your fucking bag. <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad we've answered that. I will respond. Yes. <laughs> Code hipster, it's in your fucking bag. Oh, good, as long as you give him credit for that. Oh, wait, did he set up a new Twitter account? No, Just it's him. Oh. Actually, now I know who it is, too, which is good. For years, you followed me. I'm like, who is this crazy person? Is Matt the one that accosted you at the Pennsylvania gas Oh, that was your buddy, Pennsylvania gas station guy. That was kind of freaky. So, quick story. Uh, we're in the middle of Pennsylvania, and it's pouring down rain, and we're driving back home from my folks' house in New York, and uh, I need coffee, so we stop at a Sheets, because that's what one does in and Pennsylvania. I apparently needed a magazine. <laughs> and I got a magazine for her, and I'm sitting there getting filled up the coffee, and this guy walks up to me, he's like, you're Bruce Potter. And I'm like, <laughs> this goes weird real fast. And I'm like, yes. He's like, you interviewed, interviewed me for a job last week. I'm like, oh, I didn't recognize him at all. And he's he's like, got one hand with the coffee, and this hand is slowly rolling <laughs> up the magazine. And he's like, you didn't hire me. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I'm thinking, at least I have hot coffee. Like, I can defend myself <laughs> if I have to. And then he got very good natured. We had a fine conversation. But there was a split second in which I thought, I just rejected this guy for a job, and he's going to shiv me in the sheets in freaking <laughs> Mithelsburg, Pennsylvania. So... Yeah, yeah. Dial M for murder. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Next up. Next, next slide. Um, CFP continued. I <laughs> I'm only laughing because I've done this so much. Um, so we use a open source uh, piece of software called OpenComp for um, paper submissions. Uh, it's actually more geared towards academic um, type kind of uh, conferences, but it works for our purposes quite well. Um, for years I used it for free and then finally I started paying because I felt bad that I'd gotten like 12 years out of them without giving them any money. So I just pay the minimal amount I can Go every year just to be like, thank you. <laughs> you know? um, generally we have between 15 and 20 people on our review committee. Um, that's a large number for the amount of papers that we have, but um, some of those people also do other jobs for me, so it, I require them to review less papers, whereas some people, this is their only job, and I'm like, no, you will review the correct amount of papers for me. So between all of that, our goal is that every submission at least has four reviews. Um, at a minimum, we usually hit higher marks than that, but at least four different eyes giving us four different opinions. Um, they, they, it does use a scoring system. Um, it's one is like I hate you, go away, and six is like if you're not on stage, I'll cry or something like that, right? Um, so now that I've said that, the score is only part of the equation as to whether or not you end up on our stage. Um, we we look at the scoring, we look at the comments from the reviewers, but those scores themselves do not dictate who ends up up here. Once the reviews are done, I usually sit down and take um, the time to read through about the top 50 to 60. Submissions that kind of sort of based on score and then I'll start picking the program um, And I do like a draft program So I do the whole first pass pretty much by myself and I 
you know, pick talks. And then when it happens is I'll go down later and I'll look for like big gaps, talks that got a one and talks that got a six. And I want to know why that disparity is there. And then I bring in Bruce and, and John and Ben and we sit and we, after I've sent them a copy of the draft, we'll sit and we'll start to finesse the rest of the talks. And we'll look at some of those areas where there's these big disparities and figure out why that occurred and if, you know, if we were to rate the talks, would it all of a sudden really boost it up or would it still bring it down? And then beyond that, you're balancing across your tracks, right? So you may have a lot of great talks that fit <laughs> the belay it track, but we've got build it and we've got bring it on to fill as well. So we always turn away good talks. That's the main thing I'm trying to emphasize. Just because you didn't get selected, it doesn't mean your talk wasn't good. It just means it didn't fit this year. Sometimes it means your talk isn't good, okay? Um, or you didn't follow directions. That is actually the next slide. So we're going to get there. So um, uh, another question for the peanut gallery. OK. What was the most unexpected yet rewarding schmoo related occurrence in recent years? Uh, there's a thinker okay, for you. OK, I'm going to think about that one for you can, a hot minute. You can, you can, I'm going to come back to later. that one. Yep. Um, while I think about that, do you have an idea? Because I'm very scared. You don't want mine. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, I do, well, it depends on how recent. I, I do have one for me. Okay. Um, about exactly nine years ago, um, I was getting ready to pack to the conference, and I realized that, um, well, I'm a girl, and I realized that something hadn't happened, so I did a thing, and I walked out to Bruce into the living room, and I said, I'm pregnant, and we're going to talk about it on Monday. <laughs> I didn't have a lot to drink that year. <laughs> <laughs> Here, would you like a drink? No. <laughs> no, I carried around empties at the Saturday night party just because I couldn't even like bear to think that somebody would ask me why I wasn't drinking. So I was, I just, yeah, I think I told three people that whole weekend. Um, the two days before I found out, I drank like four bottles of wine. So uh, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's probably not the answer you were looking for, that's but good. that's the most unexpected thing I have had happen. There you go. <laughs> so, did you have a better one? Oh, I definitely did not have a better one than getting pregnant with our kid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> He's just trying to win points. Um, before we go on to how to hack selection, or is there any other information that you guys want to see about CFP stats? I do a post on the website every year as well that contains this information, but also just a little bit more. We do like keywords on the website um, and how often they appear, and we do... Um, I don't know. There's more stuff in there. Is there anything else you'd like to see? So um, I don't know that I would publicize that because I treat like the the um, I treat call for papers as your information, not my information. But we do give feedback to authors who ask for it. Um, we are about 12 feedbacks into that process this year, so it takes time to do it because we really, I mean, we take that pretty seriously and it takes time to um, read through all the reviews and formulate those responses. Somebody's asking about time. Um, how long does this process take? Um, so we typically open the call for papers like uh, late August, first of September. I don't know, whenever, whenever it lands, it lands. It's still in my drink. Um, and then it's open um, for about two months. Uh, reviewers can start reviewing papers as soon as they're submitted. So I don't have this on the next slide, but one of the comments I will make is that once you make your submission, you have to know that it might be already reviewed. So if you come back like in three weeks, like you make a really early submission in our process, and then you get kind of towards the end and you're like, oh, I want to fix this thing. What you need to understand is okay, but probably most of the re you know reviewers have read your talk already if you submit it early. So if you're making changes, you either like need to make a big deal out of it. But your best bet is to submit what you want to submit, like get it finalized before you turn it in. Um, so, uh, but time-wise, reading those papers, I mean, if you read 80 to 100 papers, it's, it takes at least 20. I mean, sometimes you're like, they didn't follow directions, nope, that's a hard no for us. So that one takes 30 seconds. But if you're really reading and you're taking the time to maybe like, click through the links or verify or, you know, look information up. A, a bare minimum is 20 minutes a, a paper. And I think sometimes you can probably spend an hour on a paper. So it's, I mean, it's a big job and it happens right around the holidays for our reviewers. So it's a big ask. Airplane rides, right? Airplane rides, that's where I did some of it. Um, 
All right, so how to hack selection. Number one is what to the people in the audience who are on my review committee? Follow directions. Don't think that you know better than us what we want to see from you, okay? I mean, there's a certain, as far as we're concerned, there's a certain order we ask for things. Um, that's because when I have to go pick up all your bios, I want to know exactly where I'm going in your document. I mean, I don't want my time wasted. I don't want to waste your time. Um, sorry, I'm trying to read the small print. Go ahead. I'm literally just playing my microphone. This is why you're here. Are you not entertained? <laughs> like, yeah, I have made that joke before. You're right. Yeah, that was, that was a replay. I'm sorry. I don't know that we made that joke. Um, the other thing I is, I think what you're looking for is put some effort into it, which is what I just did not. It was actually a performance I, I think, art. I think. I think. You uh, can just shut up. Okay. Yeah. Shut up. Shut up. All right. So, um, going back to what I was saying a few minutes ago, like. Like, do your research, put some effort to it, capital, you know, capitalize the first letter in each sentence, put periods at the end, make it easier for us to read. Um, nothing kind of gets my goat more when we ask you for a detailed description and it's shorter than your abstract. Oh, my God. All right? I'm, I'm not even going to read it. I, I, I open the paper and I'm like, nope. I don't care what it is. If your abstract is longer than your detailed description, you haven't done it right. Um, the other thing that I get kind of really mad, I don't get mad, let's just get real. I just roll my eyes and move on. But um, don't send us slides. We're not asking for slides. You know, I, I, I'm not going to read your slides. Like you, if you want us to look at slides that you already have, you can put that link in your submitted paper. But don't just send those to us thinking they're enough. And I'll tell you the first reason is they don't actually contain any of the information we need or have asked for. Um, you, you can link to those, and I, I assure you that we'll go look at them. But don't submit that as your paper. You will not get accepted. From the peanut gallery. Oh, God. Matt Armatorio. Of would course. Like to know. Hi, Matt. Real question, because his first one was stupid. Uh, <laughs> 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 Code hipster. Matt was fired until he quit. Yeah, <laughs> I fired him every day he worked for me. Uh, do you, do you pick themes and try to fit talks to a theme or vice versa? <laughs> no, I, well, which theme? Like, like the track themes or, or a theme within each track? So, so no, I don't, I don't pick themes within each track, but sometimes they do sometimes build themselves. Um, and that's kind of fun. Or even across tracks, you'll get talks that really complement each other. And when I see those trends, I'll try not, sorry, try not to schedule them against each other so that people who are maybe, I don't know, following like an iOS path can kind of walk through the, you know, walk through the day and hit those talks that are applicable to them. So I don't, I don't purposefully do that, but it does sometimes happen organically. And it's all really just dependent on what gets submitted. So we do make suggestions sometimes about talks that we might like to see, but those aren't hard rules. They're just yeah, yeah, and I think in general the, the, the philosophy is trying to create a program that's the right program for the con and the audience, which is diverse. It's not very offensively oriented. Um, it's new voices and other voices we've heard before and that kind of thing. So I think you do a very good job with, with Ben and John of balancing that out of like what's right for ShmooCon. So when you go down through the list, you'd be like, this is a talk that makes sense. Even though it may not have been one of the higher rated talks, like it feels like this is something that belongs given our audience, given our philosophy. Um, and so, uh, and even then we also get like, we'll get four or five talks basically about the same thing because it's like a hot topic that year. And then we just have to pick like which one's the right one for us. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's a challenge. I mean, and some of the more contentious so conversations have So any guesses that. on what, um, what we might have seen as hot topics this year in, in paper submissions? Blockchain. Blockchain. Any? <laughs> so, okay. Um, no, it was none of those. <laughs> Do you remember? No. It was all about job searching. Oh. We got, I yep. want to say, six or seven talks about, um, like, job hunting. or I mean, beyond that, but that's kind of the... How to start an infosec, how to improve your career, all that kind of thing. Um, and, and it's funny, because even at work, uh, we have a, we, you know, we're an MSSP or whatever, the number one blog post we have by almost an order of magnitude is how to get started in cybersecurity. Like, I mean, it's unbelievable how many uh, uh, 
people read that. So it's a, I mean, it's a hot topic and people want to know, but also like we can't have an entire track that's like, let's talk about getting you a job. And the next person's like, I'm also going to talk about getting you a job. Like that's just not going to appeal to everybody. I, I really think it was super interesting that that, that came in a fair bit. Yep. All right, any more questions about the CFP process before we move on to my least favorite topic? Yeah, what is that? I know, everybody wants to know. You can't guess? No question. And balloon, I do not like balloons. This is true. Yeah, she hates balloons. I do. Really? Like, like the, like the, this yeah, right? If you're a controller, like a balloon Very bouquet. Not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bal- <laughs> you should. I don't, I don't like Ticket balloons. Ticket sales. Yay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, you want to talk about the tech? Um, yeah, so uh, um, we've largely created a system now that works. Uh, <laughs> it still it still induces terror three times a year, uh, and it is definitely one of the most stressful things I've ever had to do in my life. Uh, but it, it largely works. So actually, we have one Amazon instance that just serves up a static web page. Um, it's a pretty large instance, but it just soaks all of the bullshit F5ing that's happened. Um, and then once uh, we go live, I literally manually hit enter to go live on a script because we've had problems in the past where like we automated it and with the boxes like falling over, uh, you couldn't stop it from going live and then just shenanigans happen. Like I remember one year like the, the box is falling over and like I got logged in and I hit W and you wait for two minutes and then like it's like, what's the load? 18,000. You're like, well, we're in trouble. Like, like <laughs> this box will never recover. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we learned long ago we have to go live uh, uh, manually. It's a lot of vodka. Um, <laughs> and, and so then it kicks off to the reservation system, uh, the ticket reservation system, which is totally separate, right? So like the kicking in the teeth happens on static HTML. This year I added graphics and it was unbelievable. Even like little, so first of all, the first time I added graphics, I like necked them down to like 17K little tiny things and it made the instantaneous load on the box at the like go live moment went up to like a quarter gigabit, which is pretty impressive for like a static HTML page with three graphics on it. The next time, I inadvertently forgot to compress the graphics, and they were only like 60K, and still like it was like three quarter of a, t- of a gigabit, just bam! I was like, wow, that's a lot of text. Like it's just text and groundhogs and moose at a at three quarter of a gigabit for, it was unbelievable. So um, it turns out that's actually a lot of requests. So there. Well, I think Good. it was. Woo, doggies, that was fun. Um, and we so just blew through that slide. Well, it was very short. It was very short. Um, yeah, I was going to say. I was going to say we are not even halfway through. I'll stop asking questions from the peanut no, gallery. No, it's fine. Actually, the re- th- some of these will go pretty quickly. Um, most of this information was posted on the website as well. I just included in here for kind of more posterity. Um, just in case you didn't know, we sold out in in to- our total t- sellout time, which includes filling up the wait list, was um, about fifteen and a half seconds. So, um, you yeah, it's terrifying terrifying. It is the longest 15 seconds. So, I mean, here's the thing. Like, we uh, we do tech, right? And when things go wrong, you usually have time to, like, correct and adjust, whatever. Like, this, there's no time to adjust, right? If something has gone wrong, if we've screwed something up, it's going to happen instantaneously at a scale that's impossible to deal with, right? It's going to be like, whoops, fuck. And we're just going to have to unwind it and, and just deal with it. So, that's why it's so scary, is it, it's literally just, like, a big reveal. Like, hit the button and see what happens. And if it goes wrong, it destroys the next several days of our lives, right? Because we're just going to deal with all this stuff. So it, it is a luxury in some regards because we know exactly what we know well, we're going to sell I mean, out. Our, those, th- that day goes like this. Are we live? Yes. Are we sold out? Yes. I mean, that is bang, literally bang. what happens, right? And, and, and then it takes like three hours to decompress from that. <laughs> but um, what I'm going to point out here, so one of the big questions we always get is, you know, does anybody ever get tickets off the waiting list? Well, yes, 38 people this year got tickets off the, the electronic waiting list. We'll talk about the other waiting list later, but um, so it does happen, and it's usually like, yeah, let's see, I don't have those times on here. They're on the um, the web post, though. Like, well, I think they're they're not on the maybe the end of your stats, David, but they I did include them in the um, the round stats the amount of time it takes to actually complete purchasing, or res- reservations, not purchasing, reservations. And that, you know, we'll see one ticket just going through the wait list, because it has what a, it's like a three minute timer, five minute timer. So we're giving you time to notice that you've gotten it. 
and it'll time out and I sometimes that I mean sometimes we'll see that one bounce like there'll be this one ticket bouncing for three or to three or four people before somebody finally claims it and that's really I don't know that always makes me nervous I'm like are we gonna be here for three days <laughs> you know, like, is nobody gonna buy this ticket um, we do a lot of um, scrubbing the data just to look for things um, I think what one of the things that I find amusing is like we know we like we know that universities dismiss class and go to the computer lab and let all their students try to buy tickets because we see that oh yeah there's a couple of them that do that um, the people who get multiple tickets invariably are recruiting large amounts of their friends and family or something like that there are, I mean we look for bots pretty aggressively we check to see what's going on we check IPs we dig into it and we look and then anecdotally, we'll talk to people. And when we hear that people like, I got six tickets, I'm like, how? Well, I had 30 friends trying to get. And so if you think about it, like, so if we look and we instantaneously we, like might have 2,000 or 2,500 people trying to get tickets, and then three, 300 to uh, 350 of them get tickets. So statistically, like what, that's 15% trying to toward 20%. So if you have 20 people trying to get tickets, three of them are going to get tickets. Right, and that's the and that's going to be six tickets. So if you have twenty friends, statistically, you're going to get six. Are tickets. we allowed to say who, um, which IP had the largest ticket purchase this year? Sure, sure, go for it. Do you remember? No. Do you remember? Well, I don't know if it was largest, but it was one of the top three, right? It was the outbound NSA. Yeah, we see yeah. we see the government proxies stand out like a. It's like yeah. NSA, Army, you know, they all. <laughs> So, so if you're looking to do any OSINT, just run a really successful conference, and you'll find all the government proxies. It works very well. Um, so we find that amusing too. Usually, the other two are, are I mean, I think one was a university this year, so that made sense. And, I don't, and then I don't defense remember. contractors start to stick up after yeah. that. So, um, so I think we just covered this. Yes. Yeah, so yep. Yes. Go ahead. Any particular reason you do uh, three rounds? Any particular reason we do three rounds? Um, yes, so part of that was originally it's so if things broke we could like make you know make it up in the subsequent rounds and we've kind of stuck with that in part because we sell out so fast so if you I wouldn't want somebody to be mad at me because I sold tickets on a, you know a Friday and you were at work so when we make these ticket dates we always make sure that you know one's at least at least one's a weekend the other two might be weekdays or vice versa depending on on when they fall. So we always do November 1st, we always do December 1st, and then that middle December date is always a date that balances whatever the other two were. Was there a question over here? No? You got a question. What's your name, sir? Hi, Christian. I'm Heidi. Hi. I just, I just feel like, you know, we're getting to know each other. So he's asking if anyone has ever presented to us a compelling argument as to why we should change our ticketing system. Do I have a blog post for you? You start and I'll finish. No, you start. <laughs> All right. Number one suggestion for our ticketing system, anybody, anybody? Lottery. 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 Do you think that's a good idea? Oh. No, tell me why. Identity proofing is a pain in the ass. Identity proofing. We don't want to know who you are. We don't want to identity proof you. So how right. do we know that you haven't stuffed the box? We have no idea. You could say like, well, just have them buy a one dollar ticket. Well, that biases to people with credit cards and money and not students and things like that. So that doesn't work. Or email addresses because I can script a billion of them. Or he is now whatever. reciting my blog post verbatim. It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> It was a good um, so, so a compelling argument? No, no one has ever presented to me a compelling argument as to why we should change our system. They certainly make suggestions, and I, there's not, I wouldn't say that we've never integrated perhaps some of those suggestions into the, into the process, but um, I haven't heard an idea yet that works better than what we're doing for the way that ticket sales happen. And by the way, I blame all of you for this chaos, not me, okay? Yeah. Let's just be very clear. I did not do this. We did not do this. There's no forced scarcity. Like, y'all just buy the tickets you need, and I think we'll be okay. Right. The answer you, is just make that a conference sweet. that sucks. He says it's well. our fault because like, you guys want to be here. So. 
Yeah, so was, uh, one thing I want to say is like we've actually spent a ton of time as a group thinking about different ways to do this, right? Because it, there are non-pleasant parts to what we do, right? Like it forces people to be at a keyboard and, and we deal with a lot of flack and whatever. Um, but we have, we, everything that we've thought through, every idea, we spent a lot of time thinking about and think, no, that's not going to work, that's not going to work, that's not going to work. And, and what's, uh, we get a lot of then emails like, why don't you do a lottery? Well, that that so would seem very simple. And then we respond back with like, here's the reason that won't work. And people are generally like, oh, I hadn't thought about that. I think that brings up a good point because I think in the last six, seven years, at least now, nobody has come to me with a new idea. I, ha I mean, the reason why I can do that is because I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. We've spent a lot of time thinking about this. But nobody's come to me with something new that makes me go, oh, oh, oh. No, sorry. My, my watch told me to stand up, so I'm standing <laughs> up because I always obey the watch. Oh, my goodness. There, I'm standing up, watch. Thank you. Okay. Could you sit back down so I can see the big slides? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so real quick about second hands. I did it. Oh, my. <laughs> my watch isn't telling me to stand up. It's I know. <laughs> I just, I felt a little left out. Stand higher. That's not possible. Oh my gosh, I am short. Okay, so secondhand sales. Um, obviously, we allow you to buy two tickets because um, we want you to bring a friend. So we have toyed with the idea of dumbing it down to one ticket or maybe making one round a one ticket round. But part of me, you know, like kind of thinks that might be okay. And then there's a big part of me that's like, no, if you get a ticket, I want you to be able to bring somebody. If you don't want to bring somebody, buy one ticket. The problem is, almost all of you buy two. So I, um, I don't know, what do you, I mean, what do you guys think? Give me a quick opinion, anybody. I see a head nod, but what? Two? Two, everybody thinks two, all right. So I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. So secondhand sales, I mean, obviously you're gonna sell your ticket to a friend or give them away if you like them a lot, but um, <laughs> it used to be, and this, it really doesn't happen that much anymore to our knowledge, but a couple of years ago, five, six years ago, we would see tickets on eBay for six, seven hundred dollars. I mean, just marked up incredibly, and people would pay it. I mean, is that, I, I guess it kind of makes me feel good, but I don't. It didn't make me feel good because there's a reason I charge the price I pay. And if you're making money off of me, like that's not, that's not super cool, right? I don't make any money off of this, so why should you, right? Like so that's my philosophy. I think the what one thing that's changed in the community has been when we were selling out 12 years ago, there weren't a lot of other cons in the space that would sell out, right? Well, that's a good and so point. there were a lot of like open-ended or whatever. Now it's just it's not uncommon to be like, yeah, I can't go to this con. Even like B sides get, you know, they sell out, Derby sold out. I mean, lots of cons sell out now, some of them pretty short periods of time. And so there we are not an anomaly anymore. I mean we're still an anomaly that we sell out pretty much faster than anybody else, but people recognize like Venues are limited, the attendance has to be limited, and we don't have the same amount of like flat coming at us for that anymore. I think so, but I, I also think the community responded to our pleas about don't buy the stupid price tickets. Yeah, I, mean, oh, I, I, sure. I think the community did. Um, we have a lot of slides left in. We're, we're, we're fine. Okay. This is the last talk. Y'all can leave. We'll talk to an empty room. Um, so the one thing on here is that we do run a wait list. It only starts after the third round of sales is over. You will not get a response if you email to be asked to put on the wait list because I don't have time to respond to everybody who emails in. However, um, people who have purchased extra tickets sometimes find themselves without friends as the con approaches and they want to they want to sell those. So they'll contact me, and as those come in, I will connect those two people um, via email. The one um, bonus, I guess, of doing this through me directly is that I will then invalidate the first ticket and issue a new ticket to the second person. I can't provide a receipt, you haven't paid me, but I'll at least assure you that your ticket is good. Um, I won't do this if you like meet a guy on the street, give him $150 and ask me to change the ticket. The transaction has to kind of go through me. It takes a lot of time to do that, but I'm happy to do that just to get tic more tickets into the hands of folks who want to be here. Am I boring you? Wow. No, I'm sorry. I just all right, well I was you thinking about Groundhog's Day tomorrow. And okay, you get this one. Go through it really quickly. All right, so um, we're really fond of the size that this con is. It helps you meet new people and help you find people that you already know. Um, and it also fits very well with this space. So, uh, and, and further, like, it's basically what fits in the house. So, I mean, <laughs> we run true. this out of our house. We even bought a bigger house and come a, a couple week, years ago. 
Yeah, when we bought a new house, we were like, this would be a great house to run ShmooCon out of, which is a <laughs> weird thing to say when you're looking for a house. Um, so, but we know how many like skids of bags we could fit in the garage and that kind of stuff. So uh, if it was bigger, it would not really fit in the house. So there are a lot of reasons, but I think in general, um, we have developed a process and a, um, kind of an environment that we think works for us for what we're trying to accomplish, and we're happy with it, and we're content, and this is the size it's gonna be. Okay, zoom, zoom. So who's here this year? We've got 96 staff, 58 speakers, 17 registered press. In the sort of general attendee categories, 1572 general admission, 247 sponsor, 36 event, 48 schmoozer, 96 students, which adds up to a total of 2170. As of about an hour, two hours ago, we were... Um, we were up to 2072 last time I looked. 2072 last time you looked. So we're about 100 down, right? That yeah, just, just over 100 math kind of right? Yes. Um, and there were still people checking in, right? 96 left. 96 left, yeah. So still people checking in. And now these numbers, um, this is kind of quasi-data. When you look at that little caveat at the bottom, we used to do this talk on Sunday, so that kind of accounts for some of like the real high numbers. But uh, I don't know, it's just data, it doesn't mean anything, but that's who's here. No, but it's always about 5%, right? Always about 5% of our sales don't show up, for whatever, who God only knows, but that seems to be about the average. Oh, that's because it's when we, we were still the, growing, yeah, too. Yeah, we left um, the Marriott around that, yeah. Yeah, we, so we, um, for obviously you can see that see it there, but now um, we capped out around just over 2,000 for a while, and then a few years ago I bumped that up to 2,200, and that's where we've been for a while now. And we're never going to get higher than that because I start to freak out, so. All right, so um, we've got 48 sponsors here. There's six levels of sponsorship. Um, Sponsorship sells out, maybe not in 15.5 seconds, but it does sell out in like four days. So um, also not a problem we have. No, we know we're gonna sell at sponsorship and it gets in the way of people's like procurement processes because some companies can't buy that fast. So they actually have to plan it in advance and have it approved, uh, which is weird for, again, because like most companies when they want to sponsor an event, the, the event's gonna be like, yes, we will take your money. Um, and so we sell out, and then we get big companies being like, can we sponsor? We're like, no, we will not take your money. And it's very confusing for people to hear that. Like, but, but what? And then they're like, maybe we can get creative about how we sponsor. You're like, nope, no creativity All right, allowed. Space for me, you had a question? It's uh, a question about labs, so I don't know if um, it's about labs in, not in regards to sponsorship, in separate. Go ahead, because the next, the next few slides are about money. Diversity of the people who attend the labs. Oh, do we get different people each year? In, in terms of sponsors or actually oh, attendees? attendees? So it's funny with labs, um, we have people who come every single year. And I would say that's, uh, is anybody in here from labs? Okay, oh, so would Richard's you guys like, say it's he's like. He's one of the ones that comes every year. <laughs> and Terry. Um, so would, would you say it's like at least 40% come almost every year, and then that other sort of half, it's almost like half, um, the other half are new, and though they change, they sort of change from year to year. So, so we're, on, we're on Saturday now, okay? So the real labs work happens on Thursday before you get here. The people who are in there on Friday and Saturday, the only way that you are going to categorize them is because they like it in there. I, I mean, the real work yeah, is done. They're hanging out today. I mean, there's not, it's, it's yeah. very different than Thursday. Um, so, I, I mean, I think that's kind of true, like, right? So some people, they get done with Thursday, they get done with the experience, everything's set up, and then they come out here and enjoy this. So whoever's in there on these days have either volunteered to, to staff or monitor, uh, you know, a shift or something like that, or, I don't know, they're super nerdy. I, like, I don't. Wow. I don't know. Ooh, sorry, labs people. <laughs> In a good way. Nerdy in a Nerdy good way. Nerdy in a good geeky, way. Geeky, not They're in the geek. way that you bite bats' heads off, geeky. Okay. Movement, yes. Um, it's, so is, is there a logistical, is there a space issue why we have limited people in labs? I think it's, it's, um, it's not, it, well, it's not just space, but there is only so much work to do as well. Um, so they build teams. Uh, Terry, I, I mean, do you agree with that statement? I mean, 
Right. And, well, I was going to, so he's right. The other thing that Terry's pointing out is like, the labs doesn't sell out in 15 seconds. Like we almost always, without even trying, just land somewhere around 40 people, 45 people before we cut off. So I, I, the question is about like content in the labs and that kind of thing. There's definitely a balance about like how much the organizers and volunteers that run it want to put into it ahead of time to make it a learning environment, um, and and versus like it, what you know how many people show up and that kind of thing. So I, I think that um, you know we've looked at expanding labs and doing more stuff, but it ends up turning into then like training and more formal. And it's and and labs okay. the people that run labs are volunteers as well. They're not. If it was a training event, it would be different. But in this case, it's very much just a. These people are spending their own time too, and so we don't want to push real hard on that. So it seems to work in its current form, so we just kind of keep rolling with it. All um, right. Yeah. Good. Sorry. So we, we literally have four more slides. We have another question. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, yes, there is, and it's on the website. The, um, the, so I'll just tell you why I chose the arbitrary date that we did. So at ShmooCon, if your kid is under 12, they don't get a badge, but they don't need a barcode. And over 12, they do. Um, and I picked that date because you can kind of look at a kid and know if they're around 12, but you can't look at a 16-year-old and know if they're 16, right? Like, there's just, you just don't know. So it's, it's, a, it's a, do you look 12, 12? <laughs> I look 12 some days. Um, I don't have a badge either. I, I definitely <laughs> act 12. Um, I don't know who said that, but most of the people here I know and I agree with. So yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so that's a good question. But um, we don't do, I mean, but we don't do any specific programming to kids. That was a conscious decision oh. on our part. Tamsi has a moose. Um, I just forgot what that was called. Moose class. Moose class, thank moose you. Class. Okay, so um, super quick, because we're already a minute and 24 seconds over time. Um, in Money In, it's an old, old oh joke from God, like Shmoocon. Oh my God, it's an old one. Who knows? I fucked this slide up in Shmoocon 2. Beetle thought it was hilarious and we've kept it forever. We're in just lazy. Money In, baby. So um, these numbers are pretty accurate. Uh, we took in 226, 227,000 in sponsorship, 248,000, whatever, 247,000, I can round. In ticket sales, um, I mathed, that actually worked out right, 474,000. Sounds like a lot of money, right? All right, here's our out money out. All of these numbers are rounded and I've probably forgotten about 18 categories. But I have schmoo balls on there. They cost, they cost more this year because I got moose. They're generally about half that cost. Um, go ahead, Tansy. Which one was more the moose was more expensive, yeah. That was a hard hitting question. It was really the question she wanted to know which the, the mountain schmoo ball last year was more expensive than the moose this year. Right. You are correct. Otherwise, every other year they've been a circle, I'm branching out, Still some glitter. introducing change. All right. So as you guys are looking at this, do you have any questions about these categories? And again, this is all kind of best guess estimate. Well, some of these I look at the invoices, but, um, and I'm certainly forgetting money that has been spent. So um, if you were to actually add all this up, you'd be like, Heidi, there's all this money left over. No, I've forgotten some things, I assure you. So the banners, real quick. Uh, last year, we invested in a, um, a solvent uh, banner printer from Roland, and so we have a large format solvent printer, and we print our own banners. The first banner was really expensive because you had to pay for the printer, and they get really cheap after that because the material and the ink is silly cheap. So, um, you know, we also have a laser cutter. So the years that we've done laser cut badge, we don't have to pay for all the time on laser and that kind of thing. So our costs in some areas are low, but it's because we've made investment in, uh, you know, basically capital expense, uh, like laser cutters and things like that to offset the price of doing the work. Yes. Oh, the DEF CON. So the question's about the DEF CON and the travel expenses. Um, so. I'll start with DEF CON. We bring Hack Fortress to DEF CON every year, so that number, which is basically a rough guess, is the cost of um, shipping the equipment that we that we use um, out there and then the associated costs, like gear costs with that. And most of hotel, my staff flies themselves and pays for themselves, and I, may be, I might take them out to dinner while they're there, so they're awesome for doing that every year. Um, so that's the cost associated with DEF CON. The other category you see there, um, I don't get paid to do this. So um, I don't make, I mean, 
There's no money coming into my bank account directly from the con. So the one benefit that I get is that um, it pays for things like when I attend other conferences or like my cell phone usage, which is actually a different category than that. Um, if, you know, Shmukon buys my computers, that kind of thing. So I do see like some benefit, but not, not a direct benefit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and it's uh, that kind of stuff, like, if we didn't account for it here, it would still be, uh, we'd have to do it against taxes, because it would be, like, it's still a business expense, so we just pay it out of that account instead. Yes. What do I wish, what do I wish we could spend more money on, and what I, I wish we could spend less money on? Um, wow, that's a good one. I can tell you the category up there that terrifies me the most is the one labeled Saturday Night Party. Um, well, I guess I, I, I changed the name. It's called Food and Bev. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so there's Bev. There's Bev. <laughs> Just Bev. I don't know if you met Bev, but she'll be very She's popular kinda like later. She's kind of like Karen, but different. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, so uh, that's an interesting question, Todd. I, I think that um, I think that slowly over the years, the things I wanted to spend more money on, I did. So that's things like you know when we finally started to start paying for staff rooms. Um, you know, I had to make that happen at first because we really didn't have the money to do that. And then things like um, more just uh, for me, it's been I have grown in spending a lot more money on the staff. Um, so then a few years ago, I started doing special staff bags and things like that. So the other stuff, well, like, you need it, it's kind of static. I'm not, you know, I set a boundary for bags. I'm not going to go crazy on that because I don't think we need to. Um, but it's things, so there's even things that make our lives easier where it, it, our, our... We're going like to go quick. This literally, they like need to the set up the party the and they got to open for the, 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 you know... Um, Wi-Fi, like who bought those, and it, it made Wi-Fi easier and better for everybody. And we keep the freaking truck for a week now instead of a day. We used to freaking right. stuff bags on right. Wednesday for no goddamn reason except so to try I, to kill ourselves. I, so to yeah. sort of softly answer the question, I think we've learned to spend the money where we need <laughs> to and we're want to. get jettisoned. I know the they need to open the the air walls. Yeah. So obviously there is some money left over. It felt really good the year we finally had enough money in the bank account that um, could actually cover like if we made no money on the con, and we've basically kind of sort of kept it near that, a little over that amount now, but near that amount um, every year since, and it's peaceful knowing that, right? All right, so I promise you this is the second to last slide. Are there, is there anything in this presentation that you guys would like to see in future years? Okay, good. More moose, yes. Roos this means that I can moose. continue to use these slides with zero issue. Um, if you think of something later, you can email us. Actually, no, don't email that. I killed it because it was getting too much spam. So email info, not that. <laughs> right? Yeah, but we will read all the mail that you send in a non-existent email address. So. <laughs> all of it, all promise. Of it. Yeah. Um, but no, email info, and um, we're being told to shut up. Yeah, yeah, all right. So anyway, good job. Thank you. That was fun. All right. Thanks, everyone.